Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is good and He is truly good all of the time. He's worthy to be praised. He is the Most High God, El Elyon, El Che, the living God who loves us with a true agape love. I mean, that's where we started, isn't it? That's where we started. <laughs> and that's where we will finish. Because Christ is in us. And God has forgiven us of all of our filthiness, all of our sin. He's brought us back into himself through his son. He's bought, brought his creation back to himself. We were made by God and for God. We are made for Christ. <laughs> to live through Christ. The word of God. The very expression of himself he sends into the earth so that we could see him and see his nature, see his love for us, see his thoughts and his intentions for us through Christ, his son. We're not just reading a Bible and we're not just believing somebody who was born more than 2,000 years ago. This is truly the son of God. What information could last about somebody this doggone long? And, and you can feel the power of him. Even if people deny Christ, they feel the power of what they deny. Let Christ be in you. and Learn how to live through the truth. Learn how to live by the truth. The truth that is revealed from above. I'm going to say it again. God has sent his spirit into our hearts so that we could know him. So that we could know him. Now it's up to us to press into the kingdom of God. Violence seizes outside the kingdom of God. It's just violence is all around you. And it's all outside of you like a force. An unseen force trying to make you make decisions. Trying to wrestle with you. To keep you from going in. Into that deepness. Into that depth of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. God has foreordained for us to walk in His ways. God has foreordained for us to be His children. He has foreordained for us to walk by faith and not by sight, but it's up to us to keep it. It's up to us to hold on. <laughs> hold on tight. Don't let the word slip. Don't let it go. <laughs> we, could, we could be like Esau. <laughs> We have to be intentional. We have to understand that we have a relationship with the living God who created all things. Not some things here and there. The world was created by the very word of God. Everything that you see and things that you don't even see were created by him and for him. Yet he tells us that all things will work together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. You see, it's intentional that we keep our fellowship with God, that we understand what God has done when he sent his son. He gave us his son He's to live through. He pours his spirit into our heart. He gives us his spirit. Do we understand when the Bible says God is that spirit. God is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. See, there's something rolled away from your heart when you really believe that God exists and that he's for you and not against you. That he wants to work all things out together for your good. Because see, you're, you, what is that word I'm thinking about right now? Reciprocate. <laughs> you you take hold of this love and you the love that he's loving you with you love him back you you you're in a in <laughs> getting ahead of myself here lord help me we're so entwined in the love of god and we see his goodness we taste his goodness we know of him and he and we are known of him we see what he's done for us in the spirit and in your heart you know it that he loves you beyond measure so much that he was willing to come in the flesh and die so to bring us into himself, to reconcile the world to himself. Jesus finished the job. 
We're in a personal relationship with the living God, and I am not willing to let him go. No matter who does what, I am not willing to get, let him go. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I pray that the Lord be your keeper, the Lord be the shade upon your right hand, and that the sun not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. It can't. It just simply can't. There's no weapon formed against you that can prosper when we know our God because his words are in our, in our heart and his words are in our ears. The words that he's spoken to us, we have come back to him and sat down in the secret place of the Most High and just meditated. We sat down with him. We leaned on him and said, Lord, this hurts. This problem sucks. I don't like my life right now. Father, this and Father, that. And, and we've taken what he said. We've gotten, you see, we can let all that go. We can cast our burden before the Lord and he will sustain us. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. <laughs> we can come cast our burden before him. He won't allow us to be moved from the nature. Of, uh, he won't allow us to be moved from that sound mind. The mind of Christ, the clear mind. We've been given his spirit. I'll come back to Psalm 91 in a minute. But he's given us his spirit. Not a spirit of fear, but his spirit. Of power, dutimous power, authority. No, there's no weapon formed against you that can prosper when we know him and we're going deep into this relationship that we have in him. Christ in us, he's perfecting us. He, the Holy Spirit is perfecting us in true holiness. You know, the more we desire the Father, the more we desire the Son, the more we desire to live in the Spirit, the stronger your heart's going to be. The more this world can't get to you and, and, and make you live according to the flesh, the fear, <laughs> the hatred, the bitterness, the, the, all the stuff that is anti-God, nothing is supposed to be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God did everything for us to bring us into the house. He gave us his son. Jesus says the kingdom of God is not here or there, but it's right there in you because you've received Christ. You heard the words when he said, repent, Ch change your mind. The kingdom of God is at hand and you took hold of the kingdom. You really took care, took hold of the kingdom. Then we're going to live according to what the kingdom is showing us, what we've seen in the kingdom. But we're only going to see that as we sit in the secret place of the Most High and understand who God is. Elohim God. Elohim God. You know, when we know him, that he's our refuge and strength and very present help, there is no job, no husband, no wife, no children, no mom, no dad, no cousin, no, no uncle, no, no auntie, whoever it is that is close to you. I know I always talk family, but it could be your church family. Not everybody that followed Moses did so out of their own obedience. Hmm? They didn't do it because they wanted to go to the mountain and worship God for real. Some people come to church because they want to go to church, but they don't want to be the church. See, upon this rock, upon this information that Christ has given us, the, the, this information that comes from God alone about his son, how God reveals his son to us, upon this knowledge of who Christ is, he, Jesus Christ the Son of the living God will build his church, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. You're his house, his church, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You're, you're God's house, a temple of the Holy Spirit, the living God. If we've united ourselves with the Lord, we are one spirit with him. What is that 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, I think. 
The Lord wants to fill you with the knowledge of His will and give you wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you can walk worthy of the calling you're called to. He's not allowed, He doesn't want you to slip away because of whoever's in your life doing whatever they do. I want to pray more earnestly for those who are in my life that are living a life of sin, that are being led away by the devil. Their minds have been blinded and taken captive. There may be some people in your life that say, Oh, I believe Jesus. I believe in the Christ. And yet they don't show the fruit of it. They don't show the fruit of it. Some of the people can show that they can go outside and show fruit. They can show show off their talent and their gift. But the but they can't bear the fruit at home. You need to bear the fruit at home. We bear the fruit no matter where we are, no matter what condition we're in. If somebody needs help or needs a word from the Lord, if somebody needs something, we are able to do what we can do to help somebody else. But our what what's going on in, in us is because we've given our, Christ, our life to Christ. I have to flip that around a little bit, but we're in Christ. We're no longer our own. The blood of Jesus Christ has gone before us, and, and we... I'm, I'm just so, so serious about this. We belong to Jesus. I am not my own. I was bought, brought, bought <laughs> with, with a price. The price of blood. I believe it's in Hebrews. You, you can't, you know, you're, please don't throw his blood back in his face because you got angry about what somebody else did. Grief and sorrow and, and what is that other word? The spirit of despair. They come in to tempt you. When we know God, we understand the condition of all mankind. And I don't care if they go to church or not. We understand that nobody was born like Jesus Christ. We're all growing up into Christ. We're all becoming like more and more like Christ. I don't mean that we're going to become Jesus. I just mean that we're we're his offspring. And the more we hang around our parents, <laughs> the more we know his ways. We become more and more like him as we glean the word of God, as we eat and drink and meditate on the word. Everybody is growing up. And where they might not see what they did, what they said, or what they did was wrong, and and, and, and it, it just took you for a loop because you thought everybody was so perfect once they came to Christ. I'm sorry, but we're not. We're not. We are. Listen, if anybody's going to forgive anybody, let it be you first. Fall to your knees. Do like Moses did. Look at Moses. <laughs> These people were were nuts. They saw all of these miracles that God did. They saw more than we see. More than any of us have ever seen. They were right there. And they saw all the plagues that were put on Pharaoh in his company. They, they saw water coming out of the ground. They saw manna, food coming from the sky. They saw quail just coming up and coming up. They, they saw great works a pillar of fire by night and a cloud to lead them by the day. Water coming out of a rock. Moses, when these people acted a fool, why can't you give us what we need? Blah, yelling at him and stuff. He falls to the, his knees and he prays for them. Father, don't kill him. Almighty God, don't, don't kill him. God says, I'm going to kill him. He, he, Moses, oh, Father, don't kill him. <laughs> Why can't we be like that, knowing the end of all things? Instead, we get angry. We get bitter. We turn in on our own self and start consuming, just chewing them up in our, in our minds. We chew up sinners and we chew up those who are in Christ who fall short of God's glory instead of doing what we're supposed to do. Galatians chapter 1 says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. And I 
I just pull out this word, gentleness, gently. But watch yourselves. Because see, if you don't do this, if you don't come to God and say, Father, I bring this burden before you. You see what they've done. And it really hurts. Because we can talk to God so plainly. We can bring our care before the Lord, knowing he cares for us, that he will guard our hearts and minds and keep us in perfect peace because we keep on we keep on walking with him and talking to him. He's our best friend. We know that he walk, works all things out together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. His purpose is salvation. If we're going to walk in the light, then we got to stay in the light. If we're going to walk by faith, then we need to hear by faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If we're, going to, we're supposed to love our brothers and sisters. We're supposed to come to the Lord and submit ourselves to God, even when it's hard and too much to bear, especially when it's too much to bear, especially when it's hard. Let yourself be weak before the Lord instead of rising up and, and saying what you think you know. Hmm? The living God knows everything because he knows the thoughts and the intentions of every person on the planet. He knows our heart. He knows our ways. He knows our stubbornness. He knows when the devil, he sees the devil whispering. He sees the devil picking that thing out right there and shoving it in that person's face and they go click on it. What are we going to do? Be the accusers? Do we step into the devil's camp with him, with them? Or do we stand in front of the living God saying, My Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, my so-and-so needs help. My brother needs help. My sister needs some help. Father God bless her. Help her to see what you see and to hear what you hear. Father, draw her back to you. Draw him back to you. Father, help them. And let the Holy Spirit speak through you. And strengthen your heart so that you don't fall into grief and sorrow and bitterness and torment of the mind. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then when it's time to come and restore this person, you'll do it so gently, so lovingly. <laughs> so lovingly. You know, if, there, if there's a reason that the Holy Spirit might have to come out bold, he will. Believe me. He knows how to be stern when it's time to be stern. But the sternness of the Holy Spirit is different than an angry person. Hmm? Because an angry person has to say, Raka, you stupid fool. But the way that the Holy Spirit does it, I'm telling you. <laughs> so watch yourself so that you... So that you also, because you also may be tempted. You don't get tempted by the same thing that they're tempted with necessarily. I mean, unless that was your thing too. What is that new word? Unless that was your niche too. I hate that word. <laughs> I don't like that word. <laughs> but hey, the signs of the that's the times. You know, words change and become popular. <laughs> anyway, let the Holy Spirit let you let restore that person gently humbly before God let him use you let him work through you <laughs> oh man help us Lord Jesus Christ let me read I'm gonna read the New Living Translation on that one too Galatians chapter 6 and 1 dear brothers and sisters if any if, if another believer is overcome by some by some sin you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. <laughs> and that's why, you know, the only way to do that is to submit to God. Keep your heart in the hand of God. Do not be like Esau. <laughs> We're going to come back to that one. In a minute, I guess. So, so what I'm saying here, look, look. Um, in doing daycare, all, the number of years that I did it, one of the reasons the kids loved me so much is because I didn't discipline them because I was angry. 
and they knew it. When they got in trouble, I mean, my love was on fire. It was like fire. It wasn't like, oh, baby, now let's gently lead you into the right path. You know, it wasn't like, oh, now, I forget what they, what, how they, um, what the rules are in, in engaging an angry child who's hit another one or bit another child or, or took all the, I had one group, they took all the puzzles and I had a lot of puzzles. And while I'm making breakfast for them, and mind you, it's just two of them. <laughs> while I'm making breakfast, the one older brother, is a year older, is telling his little brother to go get another puzzle or go get this and go get that while he opens the box and he throws them all on the floor. They took every single, like 20, 20 or 30 puzzles and they threw all of them in the middle of the floor and mixed up all the pieces. <laughs> and I walked in the room and, and yeah, I was mad. But there's a difference in your anger. They knew that they were wrong in what they did. And so does anybody. These, You know, they know innately, they know in themselves that it's wrong. They just choose to bypass that. And they want you to, to touch them, you know, pity pat them for their, their, their badness, for the sin. Well, anyway, so they, the kids did that. And the first thing I said was, get in the corner. You over there and you over there. Well, so that they couldn't see each other. But you over there and you over there. And I probably did murmur a few other things, but I didn't, you know, no cussing, no fussing like that, nothing like that. But I waited until the idea came to me of what to do for this. And I said, okay, now you think that I'm going to clean up those puzzles for you. Well, I'm not. You're going to clean up those puzzles and then you cannot, you, you're not going to have your breakfast and they love their breakfast. You're not going to get your breakfast until every puzzle piece is in the right box. <laughs> There's ways to do things. And you know what? Of course they never did it again. But they, the point being is that they loved you for that correction, the way that you brought the correction. It wasn't yelling and screaming and, 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 uh, and spankings. It wasn't any of that. There's a way to bring people back online. Sometimes you have to get up and keep on making breakfast. Sometimes you have to get up and, and uh, just clean the house, speak kind words anyway. Do what you do, but whatever you do, stay in love with God. Don't let what people do throw you off. If you get thrown off in any way, you can run to the throne of grace where you can find the help you need. We have a relationship with the living God. Make them some cookies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go do something else, but do something good. Now, I'm going to come back to this Esau one because it really set out to me. A call to holiness is Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no root of bitterness springs up to cause trouble and defile many. Yeah, that's a sneaky heart we got. That's a sneaky heart we got. If your heart condemns you, God does not. We can't lean on our own understanding. You can't lean on the frustrations and the fears and the cares of life. We lean on the one who created us after his own image, who saved us. You know, put on your helmet of salvation. Remember who you are. Go back to the word. Go back to the mirror of the word. And let it be the reflection. Let it become your reflection. God puts his word in your heart and in your mouth so that you can walk by faith and not by sight. But as a continual surrender to the living God, not like a, a slave to, uh, over to an angry ruler, but to one who loves you with a real love. The one who is your... See, yes, God is sovereign and he is the almighty, most high God. Greater than anything that has ever been created because he's not created. He's, he's God. Elohim, he sits... 
he, you know, eternity surrounds him. Listen, God is who he is. And, and, and until we get this point, God exists. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please him. God exists. We must believe that he exists. Hebrews chapter 11, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to him must believe that he exists. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently, who persistently, who all the time, every day, 24 hours a day, seek him. They're always looking to him. One of the Psalms says, as, as a maid and a maiden, and as a maid looking to her mistress, we're always, our mind and our, our, our eyes, our heart and our intentions are always on the living God. Yes, he wants you to live life, but there's something about him. He's in you, to you, and through you. He's all for you. He loves you with such an, a love. This love goes into your heart and purifies you. But it purifies you through knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, the blood of Jesus did it. Yes. But all the blood of Jesus is love. And all the words of Christ are love. Mm. Oh, no, they're not. You know, it's some people are going into the lake of fire. This is all their choice. There had to be a decision made. There had to be a line drawn. Because people want to do whatever they want to do. But those who surrender their heart and mind to God, those who want to live with him forever. They desire to be like him. That was the plan in the very beginning before God created man from the dust of the ground. His thought process was, let us make mankind in our image. Let's, uh, let us make a male and we're going to make a female. We're going to make a male and a female. Let us make mankind in our own image. That's what the Father's intentions was. And we're right back to it. Being created after the image of the Son. I, I want to be friends with God. I want to be a lover of God. I, I See, God exists. And we're going to be caught up with Him. Caught up by... Jesus, the sound is going to come. Jesus, if we're going to, in a moment, <laughs> in a blink of an eye, we're going to be caught up with the Lord. Goodness. Are we ready? Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's our life. He's our peace. He's our Abba. He's our everything. No one in this planet has life outside of God. I don't care how mean they are. I don't care how crazy they are. I don't care about their deepest, darkest sin. I don't care because everything was created by God. Any person that you see formed on this planet was made by God. He scooped the dust from the dust of the ground. He blew his breath into the nostrils of man. And here is the prototype of Adam all throughout the earth, everywhere we stand. Your husband, your kids. See, we got to think outside this box, this physical box that we're living in. This earth suit. Stop living in the soulishness where we were born. We, we were born into the world, into soulishness. But now we're born of the Spirit. Born of the Spirit. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> I tell you. Oh, I pray that the, the you hear me today and get moved from darkness to light. From the power of the devil unto God. That you may walk in the way that you are called to walk. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15 again. See that, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no root of bitterness springs up to cause trouble and defile many. Too easy, right? See to it that no one is sexually immoral. Or godless, like Esau, who for a single meal sold his birthright. I'm not giving up. I, I will not give up my birthright. 
Jesus has given me salvation. I'm holding tight. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm holding tight by falling into his arms every day. Do I acknowledging him in all of my ways? He is my life. If anybody's going to be fear, I'm going to fear God. It's not a fear of going to hell. It is, it is an, a reverential trust. A heart trust. A, a mind trust. He can have my soul. Because I know that the, that the Lord's thoughts towards me are good. And they're not evil. Thoughts of peace and not evil. He wants to give me an end that, that glorifies his name. And I am more than willing to say here because, see, God is good all the time. The enemy wants to demolish. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to pervert our lives and cause us to go into darkness headlong. You don't care. He don't care nothing about you. All he cares about is kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. That's why we must come into the knowledge of God. We must eat from our master's table. He's put a table before us in the presence of our enemy. You know the difference between the table that we eat from when we're all in our feelings and the table that, that God has set before us? God, With God's table, we understand that it's God's table. He's our shepherd. He's our Lord. And he's prepared a feast for us in the word of God. There's The word is bread. It is is meat. It is drink. It is. It, it, it truly is. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's how we live. We're created by him and for him. And like everybody else, especially those who are in your household, created by God and for God, but it's their choice to serve the living God. If we live in our feelings, we're going to give away our salvation. We're going to give away our salvation to our husband, to our kids. We're going, to, we're going to pass it by because they're in their feelings. Because they don't know God. They don't trust God. They don't know Him like you know Him. I refuse. I absolutely refuse because God is who He is. And He's given us His Son and I refuse to so throw His Son's blood on the ground and say, I... I don't need you. I got this. Or being deceived and thinking I got this. I give my mind to Christ. I give my mind to the word of God so I can be transformed. I want to be renewed. Renewed in the knowledge of him who made me for his purpose. Who knows his plan for me. Come on, He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your children, a plan for your husband, a plan for your wife. He has a plan for your mom and your dad. But it's up to them to take it. We just need to learn how to live in Christ so that they can see the light. The light of God through us. The light of Christ through us. Understand that the enemy masquerades like an angel of light. Things can look really good and it be just as evil and it we be deceived. But if we're transformed, if we're really coming to the table and eating from God's table, we understand that the enemy's right there looking at you. He sees you. But great, as long as you are saying what your father is saying, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Every time you open your mouth to say what God said, light comes out of your heart. Light comes out of your mouth. It just blinds the enemy. He don't know what to do with it. He tries to throw those temptations at you, but they're not working because you sold yourself. You put yourself in the hands of God. You, you sold yourself to the word of God. I should say sowed like a seed in the ground is, is your heart and mind. You've taken your soul and you put it in the word and said, I want, I, I want Jesus. I, I want the salvation of God. I want you in my life forever. I want to be healed. I want to be whole. I want to be entire, lacking nothing. And I'm going to keep my face in this word so this word can do what it does. See, because in patience, you possess your soul. Patience through looking at this perfect word and letting this word graft you. The Holy Spirit is grafting. He, he, he's causing this word to grow up in you. So that you understand the ways of God, the will of God. You get into the whole knowledge and, and the, all the theology of God. He's good. <laughs> I 
I didn't say that religiously. I, I, what I meant is that you, you, you get into this word and you begin to study it. We're God's workmanship in Christ Jesus. We study to show ourselves approved. A workmen that need not be ashamed. We're all ministers of God. We're just maybe ministering in different ways. God loves you. He wants to pour that love into your heart and, and heal your heart and mind. He wants to bring you so close that you become this dynamic light in the earth. Re and, 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 and people are people are healed and people are whole and become restored. They come to God because you are not giving up. You are not giving it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 17. Let's see what it says. For you know that afterward, when when he received, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, talking about Esau, he was rejected. Because he gave it, he he sold his birthright. He gave away everything. Every he knew the goodness that his, he was going to get from his father. He knew the wealth. If you know, it, it is a hard saying right here. And I don't think a lot of us know, so don't get scared. I don't think that a lot of us know the true depth of God's love. I, I don't think a lot of us understand true repentance. I, oh, believe me, I felt true repentance. And it hurts. It, it, you weep before God, wanting to so walk away from this thing. I will never, ever do it again. There, there's, a, there's a great repentance. Some people repent, and they keep going back. <laughs> but what I did, boy, it tore me up. <laughs> it tore me up. I love God too much to ever want to think about doing that again. It hurt, broke my heart. And I'm not saying what it was. But I still feel it to this day. Now that's that's real repentance right there. A lot of us so I don't I just don't want us to think that you threw away your birthright because you gave in to something that somebody who was immoral was doing or that you yourself became immor immoral. You know, you did something. But God will, you know, when you change your mind, when you say, Lord, help me, I don't want this. You go back and read James chapter 1 and see that you cannot be tempted by something that's not in you. If that's not in you, you can't be tempted by it. But that's why we read the Word, so that we can get these things out of us. Never, never, I'm going to say this, never, never, ever say, I like this sin. I like this. It feels good. Don't do it. Read your word and find out what it says about certain things. The more of this word you get in, the more of that evil, the sinful nature, it, it gets out. We're not leaning on our own understanding. We're leaning on Christ. We're leaning on God. We're trusting the Holy Spirit who will teach us everything. The spirit that God has sent into our hearts, I'm telling you, what is it now? Romans chapter 8. How does he do it? He mortifies. The Holy Spirit is the one who makes the flesh alive. He quickens your mortal body. The Holy Spirit is the one who knows how to kill the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are sinful nature. And there ain't nobody else who can pull that out. There's nobody else that can pull that out. It's us leaning on the Lord. It's us desiring Him, understanding. It's not just some off desire. You can feel the presence of God, and you can feel the presence of God's love for you. Even as I'm talking, I know you feel it. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. And He will help you uproot any bit of selfishness in you. Any any. Oh, what is this word? Manipulating parts of your mind that want to manipulate others to get them to feel for you. If you're dealing with with the spirit of infirmity and becoming, what is that word? My mother used to do this a lot. Hypo, hypo something. Always wanting to be sick because it got her attention. It made people stop and go, oh, Patty, 
Yeah. <laughs> it got her what she wanted. I don't know why. I can't think of the name of it. But anyway, there's a spirit that comes alongside of you and tempts you to go in that direction. And after he's got you hooked, he leaves. The spirit of pornography, a, a, a spirit of, of uh, sexual immorality. There's a spirits in the world that you cannot see. They come and deceive you, entice you to go look at this thing. It doesn't even take much because that sin nature is still there operating in you. Even if there's a touch of it. But we kill it by the word of God. And it's not by our works alone. It's, see, we're in a relationship with a living God. I can't stop now. i got to finish this. I'm going to get this all out. See, we're in a relationship with a living God. And he has sent his spirit into our hearts. A comforter, a teacher. Huh? And the teacher knows how to teach. He knows how to lead and he knows how to guide. And we need to trust him. He, the, see, the Lord has made it possible that we can be delivered from all evil. It can get out of us. That's what we need. We need it out of us first. <laughs> we need it out of us first. Praise the Lord. I'm so used to my microphone being on the other side, but it's not working right anymore, so I have to use my, my Logitech w old webcam, but it's working well, but I keep turning my head to the other side. So if there's a fluctuation in where I'm talking from is because I keep turning my head in the other way. But anyway, okay, so Esau here, right? Let's go back to verse 15, Hebrews 12 and 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up to cause trouble and defile many. See to it that no one is sexually immoral or godless like Esau who for a single meal sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. He could, know, he could find no ground for repentance, though he sought it with tears. Now I want you to know, like I said, the only reason I said all that I said about James, the book of James chapter one is because we need to understand that there may be still something working in us. Spirit of manipulation. You know, spill that flesh is hooked in the it's hooked in the old nature still. But the only way to get it up out of there is by understanding that you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit has been sent into your heart to be your instructor. He's your teacher. He leads you and he guides you into all truth. This is a promise of God. He, the, it, without the Holy Spirit, I'm not. we're not guaranteed that we're going to enter into everlasting life. Do we, how can we be caught up if we don't hear by the voice of God? If we don't live with the Holy Spirit? Our friend, the Paracletos. How? How? Understand your friend. Let your friend live with you. He's been put in your heart to pour out the love of God. <laughs> you can love yourself and you can love others and do it right. You can bear the fruit of uh, the fruit of the spirit, the nature of God, rather than bearing the fruit of witchcraft <laughs> and idolatry. You know, you don't have to be greedy about anything. Anything. I'm not gonna, just going to put that on food. Because there's a whole lot of things that we're greedy for and we don't understand how greed is really working in our lives. It's not just money. It's the lack of money. Yeah, and anyway, okay, that's not my story. Anyway, he could find no ground of repentance, though he sought it with tears. And I don't think that a lot of us are right there. A lot of us have not really tapped into the true love of God that he has for you. And I want us to come into this nature of God's love so that we're not, you know, we can let go of the bitterness and we can look, let go of the things that we don't understand, the things that we don't get. God is for you and not against you. And he wants to fill you with the knowledge of his will and give you wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you can walk worthy of the calling you've been called to. So that you can live a life where you have peace. No matter what's going on. This world getting crazy. 
It already was crazy. It's getting more crazy. And it's going to get more crazy. But you who have the light. Walk in it. Walk in Christ. Live in Christ. Live in the word of God. Let it transform your heart and mind. Because God loves you. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face. Love God. Because I'm telling you. He will not stop loving you. <laughs> I love you. Bye-bye.